Size versus strength. They are correlated, but it's not an exact correlation. Not just regarding strength, but for speed and power too. This iceberg will be organized from most to least known things. So let's not waste any time and jump straight in. You read the title, but more so you saw the thumbnail and at the very top of that iceberg, it shows fast twitch. If you already know, don't worry, stick around. I'm going to go into it a little bit deeper. All right. So you know, your muscles have fibers. They kind of look like cables and those fibers can be put into two categories, fast twitch and slow twitch. First, fast twitch. These muscles are very strong. <laughs> And like the name implies, they are also very fast. Now, slow twitch muscles are weaker, but of great stamina. Think of slow twitch muscles like a steam engine. Just going and going and going. And fast twitch muscles are like fireworks. Because fast twitch muscles can only hold their maximal exertion for 5 seconds. They are also larger fibers. On top of that, their color is more white. And to keep things simple, I didn't mention this earlier. But there's actually a third muscle type. This one is a mix. It's not as strong as pure fast twitch. And it doesn't have the same stamina as pure slow twitch fibers. Personally, I think this one's the coolest. It's like a jack of all trades. And yes, genetics do play a role to what muscle fibers you're predisposed to more. It's not purely set in stone though. Because Eddie Hall, who deadlifted 500 kilograms, actually has genetics that favor stamina. But now let's go down to something that's even more interesting. You already know about muscle fibers. Neural drive is your ability to use those fibers. Because even elite lifters can only use 80% of their strength on their max lifts. Your body wants to keep things efficient. It doesn't want to use all the muscle fibers at once. And because of that, it also activates the slow twitch fibers first since they are more efficient. Pretty much having high neural drive gives you the ability to use more of your strength. I'm going to mention a pretty cliche example of people lifting cars. Even though they aren't lifting the whole car, it's still pretty impressive. How do they do it though? Well, Theoretically speaking, they always could. And you could too. It's just our bodies don't want us to. And for good reason. Since using your full strength can just break your bones. This is why chimpanzees are so strong pound per pound. Not only do they have a lot of fast twitch muscles, but they can use more of their strength at any given moment. I'll be mentioning primates a lot because they're pretty powerful. And I know we're over talking about fast twitch fibers, but little fun fact. Your fibers might be able to switch their type. So go from slow twitch to fast twitch, which is pretty cool. Now though, it's time to move on. Let's talk about muscle density. This is such a tricky topic since there are millions of definitions for it. Some think it's the strength to weight ratio of your muscles. Others think it's the intermuscular fat or lack of that makes a muscle dense. And it really goes on and on. What I think you guys want to hear though is the muscle fibers themselves being compact. The closest thing to that is probably hyperplasia. It's like hypertrophy, which I know you probably heard of. The difference is hyperplasia doesn't make the muscle fibers bigger. It makes more of them. And this may or may not make your muscles denser. Truth is though, hyperplasia is is a lot more complicated than hypertrophy. So I don't even know if you can say for sure you can train for hyperplasia or cause it to happen. I only even mention muscle density because people talk about it all the time. And I can't exclude something like that. But let's move on to the next one. Muscle control. It's similar to neural drive. And if you think about it, neural drive itself is a form of muscle control. But the type of muscle control I'm talking about right now, unlike neural drive, doesn't make you produce any more force. It's mostly a technique thing. But now let me get to the point. What is this muscle control? Let's say you're throwing a punch. A big mistake many people make is that they accidentally flex their bicep while trying to do a straight punch. The tricep and bicep are very close to each other, but they do the complete opposite things. So that tricep powered punch can lose a lot of its strength from your bicep fighting it. And this is just a guess, but this might be one of the things that Bruce Lee meant in his famous quote. Be water, my friend. Anyway, this is something you naturally get better at without even noticing. You can do specific muscle control training though. Like try to flex individual muscles, then maybe individual segments of a muscle. Looking in the mirror while doing it can help. And then once you get really good at it, you can do stuff like this. Now though, let's go farther down circulation and flexibility. Why did I put them together? Well, they're both pretty short topics, but the big reason is most gym rats and me too at some point neglect them. Starting with cardio, this is going to be bro sides by the way. When it's in top shape, you're improving your circulation and more blood flow is probably going to impact your strength in some way. On top of that, cardio gives you a unique adaptation where you build new microscopic blood vessels that you didn't have before and they stay with you forever. I learned that one from Bioneer and actually a lot of stuff from Bioneer. Now, having flexible muscles. Well, not only is a longer muscle technically more muscle but it also means you don't have to fight yourself so much when you want to do a full extension and i know if you're hyper flexible that will affect your strength negatively but i don't think many people are going to get to that point but that was kind of boring let's move on to something cooler 
This is really unknown territory. Muscle insertions. Sadly, not something you can change, but something cool to think about. For example, if your bicep tendon connects farther away from the joint, it can greatly affect your curling strength. Like double the weight because you get that mechanical advantage. I promise I'm not trying to give you guys body dysmorphia. But technically speaking, if you don't have any gap between your chest, that's more room for muscle. And that could mean slightly more strength. But don't cry. I think this barely affects anything. Now, if we go back to the bicep example, this is a big reason to why gorilla are so strong they have the fast twitch the neural drive but it's also their muscle insertions that are made for power sadly like most things this comes with a drawback they aren't able to make intricate movements due to their muscle insertions so even if they knew how they wouldn't be able to write but let's talk about human calves for a second because they're in two clear categories low calves where your muscle inserts farther down and high calves where the muscle meets the tendon higher up and bodybuilding is desirable to have lower calves that's because there's less tendon and more room for building muscle and this also allows the calves to produce more more lifting force but don't cry if you have high calves because they're actually really good they help with running and jumping since the extra tendon acts like a spring sort of similar to a kangaroo that's why professional runners often have higher calves and of course there are a million different muscle variations people get different quad insertions different backs and abs are absolutely crazy no pun intended i could make an entire video just about this topic though all this talk about insertions and connective tissue brings us to our next point as much as the tendons on your calves can act like a spring, that's good, but you don't want slack. You want your tendons to transfer as much of the force from your muscles as possible. Your muscles move, your tendons pull. But when they are weak, instead of being like steel cables, they end up being like rubber bands and not transferring the force. Anyway, something that's even more complicated is fascia. It's like the connective tissue that surrounds your muscles and it's in a lot of places. But from what I understand, it can also be built up and become thicker. And in a similar way to muscle, it can slightly contract. So it can influence things but a big thing you can influence is if your fascia is nice and strong it might make you more springy which obviously has effects on speed and power i don't really know about specific ways to train your fascia i assume it's just something that improves on its own as you get stronger and better i do know how to build up your tendons though and for that it's heavier weights and lower rep ranges anyway let's go to our final point what do I mean by weight? Well, not muscle weight, but actually straight up dead weight. For example, if you're doing a kick and your leg was going the same speed, but just heavier, you'd have a higher chance of knocking your target over. The problem is you're unlikely to be going the same speed as someone who's lighter. Moving on to punches. Think about cannons. Let's say both cannons are the same power, but one is just super light. Every time it shoots, the recoil is going to send it like 20 feet back. So that momentum that could have went into the cannonball instead went into pushing the cannon backwards. So being heavier makes it easier to transfer the momentum momentum of your attacks i'm not telling you guys to get fat but just something to keep in mind here are some shout outs and that's it if you guys know any other factors that affect speed power strength feel free to comment down below and i hope the final point wasn't too anticlimactic have a good day